Jazz Dennis is back with a new series of his laughter show. Terribly sorry about this, old man. Sorry, I'm sorry about that. Could I get... Oh, I saved them, my favourites. Thanks awfully. <laughs> Starts next Saturday at 7.35. On BBC Two in a few moments, Maris Janssens conducts the BBC Welsh Symphony Orchestra in a performance of Brahms Symphony No. 4 in E minor. Our proceedings here on One are conducted by Bob Monkhouse. great mood here today. Everyone's so happy. I mean, uh, theatrical agents are always miserable, but I just saw a theatrical agent outside, and he was chuckling, and he was singing, and Diamond is the guy's best friend. <laughs> I can't get over that, you know. Anne's got to pay a third of a million pounds, and she's having a baby. If I had to pay a third of a million pounds, I'd be having kittens. <laughs> and Mrs. Thatcher's all upset about, about the new bills concerning teachers and grants so she's cancelled Dennis's credit at the off-license. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of teachers, by the way, I went to my uh, old school reunion uh, last week. It was marvellous. Um, I bumped into my ex-form master, Mr. Cobblington, and he said, ah, monkers. And I said, ah, cobblers. And he went up in a huff. <laughs> How school life has changed, hasn't it? Since we were kids, since I was a kid anyway, in the old days, kids carved their initials on the desk. Now they carve them on the teachers. <laughs> I've never done that with, with, with Mrs. Scabthorpe. <laughs> oh, the teacher we had. She kept 40 of us kids in perfect order and never laid a finger on any of us. Always used a boot. <laughs> Today, I look at my teenage son, Spot. <sighs> he slouched home the other day. He said, well, I've cracked the general certificate of secondary education, Dad. I think, you think you'll pass? He said, no, I learned how to spell it. <laughs> He's too precocious for his own good, that boy. I said, what do you know about the Straits of Gibraltar? He said, the gays outnumbered them three to one. <laughs> you know, his latest ambition, he wants to be a stuntman. A stuntman. I said, uh, do you think you can go around a corner on two wheels? He said, sure, nothing to it. I said, oh, good, there's the lawnmower. Off you go. <laughs> <laughs> no aptitude for this game. But if you think you have an aptitude for show business, you can apply to appear on Bob Says Opportunity Knocks in 1989. And I'll give you details about that later this evening. Right now, you star makers, I'm sure, want to know how the nation voted last Saturday night. Well, in third place, you gave a resounding cheer for the peanut vendor who lent his giant voice to a fine rendition of Maria, Doncaster's own Mike Tomlin. <laughs> ah, in. in second place, in second place, there was another enthusiastic thumbs up for the previous week's winners, Sheffield's marvelous Star Star. <laughs> but in first place, in first place, with a tidal wave of votes from you, Star Makers, it's welcome back to compete again to the original songwriter, pianist, and singer, yes, the 20 year old music student from Southampton Way, Elio Pace. <laughs>
A Southamptonshire student from Easter with Italian musical heritage, 20-year-old Elio Pace singing his own words and music. What a gift music is, isn't it? I remember the first time I saw someone just walk into a room full of silence. Yes, a big impression here in the studio. <laughs> Danny's done very well here tonight. But you're the star maker. You dial the number of the act that was tops for you and secure a place for that act among your final bill of winners live on June the 4th. I've been asked to announce a, a bit of a pile-up on the A74 this evening uh, before the show ends. A fertilizer truck apparently collided with a sewage lorry <laughs> and two tankers full of fish waste and a van carrying untreated goat skins. Police are appealing to anyone who witnessed the accident. Please, don't come forward. <laughs> Have a good week. If opportunity comes your way, don't knock it. Good night. BBC Two in a moment, Sophia and Constance meet again after 30 years. Here on One in 15 Minutes, George Siegel meets the son he didn't know he had in our film Carbon Copy. Now, the news and sport on BBC One at five past nine. bomb kills a soldier near the border with the Irish Republic. Mrs. Thatcher defends the creation of wealth. She says it's the love of money for its own sake that's wrong. America's envoy in the Middle East has talks with the Syrian leader about the Western hostages. 
England hit the West Indies for six and take the one-day series. And Beardsley's goal defeats the Scots at Wembley. Good evening. The IRA have killed another soldier in Northern Ireland. He died in a bomb attack this morning. Five other people were hurt in the blast. The soldier has been named as 28-year-old Corporal Derek Hayes from Lincolnshire. He was married with a three-year-old daughter. The explosion happened in a field outside Cross Maglen in South Armagh, close to the border with the Irish Republic. Five other people were hurt in the blast. The explosion happened about half a mile from the Irish border, in a field beside the Castle Blaney Road, outside the village of Cross Maglen. The dog handler who died was taking part in a search of the area by soldiers and police. His dog also died in the blast. Police believe a pressure plate bomb had been planted in the field beside the road. Yesterday, the army defused a bomb weighing more than half a tonne after it had been found near Cross Maglen on Thursday night. The dog handler was the fourth soldier to be killed by terrorists in Northern Ireland this year. A car passing by was caught in the blast. Five people were injured, but aren't thought to be seriously hurt. The area was later sealed off while...